Hello, I'm Hutch. I am your one-stop financial supermarket with home delivery, free home delivery. I help families earn more income, get property protected, debt-free, and financially independent. This is video four of our series, How Money Works. Today we're going to talk about deferring your taxes or minimizing your taxes, and then we're going to talk about realigning your assets. The first thing we're going to talk about is now every situation is different, whether you need a tax deduction or uh, help on your taxes, if you're paying taxes or whatever, everybody's in the, is, is different, every individual. But there's two ways we help you minimize your taxes on an individual basis. And we also help businesses set up SEPs, IRAs, stuff like that for the business and for uh, simple IRAs uh, to help the employee retention if they're offering this kind of stuff. But individually, this is what we do. There's two different kinds of IRAs that we help you set up depending on what's going on with you tax-wise. And the first one is traditional IRA, which is exactly what it says. Traditional IRA, it's either deductible or non-deductible. And you can put up to $6,000 a year in there starting 2018. Uh, 6,000 and then from there on. If you're over age 50, you can shelter up to 7,000. That means you have six or $7,000 in an IRA, uh, which is an individual retirement account, okay? Depending on your income level, if you had $6,000 in there, that amount is deductible, okay? So that means if you make $50,000, then and you had $6,000 in an IRA, then you would pay taxes on forty-four thousand, and if you were older and you had that much in it, it would be reduced by another thousand. It's tax deferred. What does that mean? Tax deferred means that it is you don't pay taxes now; you get the tax benefits now, and then you will pay taxes on it when you withdraw it. Usually at retirement. The good thing is at retirement, usually you're in a lower tax bracket, so you would pay less. Either you go pay now or later. Either way, right? So it's tax deferred or it's taxable it, uh, when you take it out. So you get the tax benefits now. And distributions, you have to take distributions by 70 and a half. That's, that's the one we put in. If you're in a 401k or whatever, we have to roll that in. But you can always have more than one account if need be. So the second one, I don't want to be too long on the IRAs. Roth IRA, which is the same amount you can put in there. Six or seven thousand dollars. Now, this is not deductible. If you make fifty thousand dollars and you have six thousand dollars in your IRA, you're paying taxes on fifty thousand. Okay, we've determined that you don't need the refund or whatever for this reason. It's non deductible, it is tax deferred, and the good thing about this is you're using after tax dollars to put the, the money in your IRA, so you don't pay taxes on it on the growth or anything at retirement. You don't have any uh, taxes due when you retire. That's a good thing. And there's no age requirement when you take it out. It's 70 and a half, whatever. You have to be at least 59 and a half to start withdrawing it, but there's no uh, minimum or time that you have after the fact. All right, now, that's your IRAs. That's how you minimize your taxes. All right, now this next part we're gonna talk about is some people don't like to talk about, but it's uh, the buying the right kind of life insurance. Okay, this is one of the most important things in your financial picture that you should be uh, spending money on. And it's also one of the most misunderstood areas in the financial world, all right? But it is very, very critical, very, very critical that, that in purchasing that, that you buy the right kind and the right amount of life insurance because it's gonna have a critical, um, it can have an impact on your family security if you die or your quality of life if you don't, all right? It'll, it'll get better in the explanation, but so what is life insurance? It really should be called death protection or, or income protection because if the breadwinner or caregiver dies prematurely, then the money you from life insurance replaces the income, the, the loss of the income. So the family can carry on, they don't have to worry about where they're going, what they're doing, and, and take care of things. So, now who should have life insurance? Life insurance, of course, the breadwinners. Uh, sometimes people think that, well, the spouse doesn't work, uh, they're just taking care of the children, but if something happened to the spouse, then you'd have to provide or have extra money to uh, 
provide for your kids also while you work, all right? So now, the, the, the critical part about this is the financial people say that life insurance should not be a permanent fixture. You shouldn't need it forever. It should be like uh, you're buying time until you accumulate wealth or you accumulate money, all right? So let, let me, I'm gonna show you how life works and this is our theory. This is the theory of decreasing responsibilities here in the corner. All right, today, when you're young, you have young children, high debt, high home mortgage, right? So the loss of income at this point in your life would be devastating, That's right? So, but as you get older, the children are grown, your debt's lower, your home should be almost paid for, if not paid for. So your need for insurance should decrease. But your need for money is very little here. Remember what we said what was in the other video? How much money would you need to accumulate $500,000 at age 69 or 67, right? From 25 to 67 was $89 a month, right? To have $500,000. So you don't have much, but you start putting some in there and it grows to over $500,000. So at this point in your retirement, at retirement, you don't need life insurance, you need money. You can't go buy groceries with a life insurance policy, right? Okay, this is why buying the right kind of insurance is very critical. The three nevers, the first one never is never buy cash value life insurance, whole life, universal life. Universal life has so many different names under it, it's, it's, it's crazy. Anytime you pay one payment to bundle the two together, it's a big no-no. Big, big no-no. The, uh, the other, uh, the big no-no, or the three no's, is never buy uh, life insurance that pays dividends, and never buy life insurance as an investment. All right? Now, let's show you why you don't want to buy a cash value. Let's take Mary, John and Mary, age 30, all right? They're age 30, and we're gonna buy the typical whole life policy. Why, and we're gonna show you why we're gonna do this and show you a better way. They're age 30, for $295 a month, they're gonna bundle. They're gonna get the cash value life insurance. For this amount of money, they're gonna be covered for $150,000 each. And then by the time they're 65, they'll accumulate $124,000 in their cash value for $295 a month. This stays level till for your whole life and you keep paying that until you're, till you're done. So now that's not too bad, right? But, it, now, but that's not how it works. What they don't show you where you get messed over and, the, and why I get a little crazy about this is because you get sold this, and the only time you figure it out, the people figure out that they've been messed over, if you don't, if I don't come tell you or if you don't share this video with somebody, then when do they find out? Is when somebody passes away or you go to retirement and you don't have what you thought you were supposed to have. So, age 30, they're covered for this. You got $124,000. Let's just say in this cash value here, you start accumulating some money and one, you have a daughter and she's getting ready to get married. You need $20,000. So you go to your life insurance company and say, hey, I need $20,000. So they say, well, cool, you can borrow this money. Did you hear that? You can borrow your own money, but that's the way it is because they want to make sure you get your $124,000, blah, blah, blah. That's what they tell you. But it's kind of crazy to borrow your own money. Then you got to pay interest back, okay? now. Let's say you borrowed the twenty thousand dollars, and something happened to John. You're gonna get your death benefit is gonna be one hundred fifty thousand dollars minus the twenty that you borrowed minus any interest that is due on there. So you don't get that plus this. If you go to if something happens at retirement or close to retirement, your death benefit you got one hundred twenty-four thousand here and one hundred fifty thousand dollars here. How much death benefit do you get paid? $150,000. Well, what happens to your $124,000? Well, they say, well, we'll give this to you. It's in part of that right there. And then the insurance company just pays the other $26,000 to 
to make up the 150. You never get both. Never, 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 unless you pick option B in the universal life policy, which I guarantee you, 99% of people have never even shown option B. All right. So does that sound crazy? Borrow your own money. You don't get this if you die. You're more insured than the insurance company, and yet it's $295 a month. Is that crazy? Would you buy that if they showed you all that at one time? If that's the best thing out there, they might, but what they don't show you is what we show people is buy term and invest the difference. This is the same $295 a month, but we're going to cover John and Mary for $400,000 a piece, and we're going to cover two of their children for $10,000 a piece, and it's going to cost them $126 a month. $126 a month, right? Is that crazy? $126, so at least $169. Now this is pure death protection. If they don't die, it's wasted money. Just like your car insurance. If you pay for your car insurance for 50 years and you never have a wreck or nothing happens, it's wasted money, right? So they don't die and nothing happens. If one of them dies, they get the $400,000. Now, what are we doing with the rest of the money? The $169 that's left over a month. We're going to put that in an investment and we're going to earn 9%. At retirement, you're going to have $500,580. All right. Now, if somewhere in this growth right here, your daughter wanted to get married, you just go in and get the $20,000 out of it. You don't have to pay it back. You just go get it. Something happens to John or Mary while this is in force. This is 35 year level term. So then by the time your insurance runs out, it'd be uh, 65 years old. You're right there at retirement. And again, we're the only company that teaches what, we're, what I'm showing you, how to eliminate the need for life insurance. Why is that? Because now they're 65 years old. At 65, they got $500,000 in their fund here. They need $400,000 worth of insurance. They're self-insured. Do they need to keep this insurance? No, they don't. They've got the, they're insured. They're self-insured. Does that make sense? When you need it the most, you get it the most for the least amount of money. As you get older, your need for insurance decreases. Your need for money increases, right? Again, like I said, you can't take the hundred the insurance policy and go buy groceries, but you sure enough can take some five hundred thousand dollars and buy some groceries. Does that make sense? That's how life goes. You don't need life insurance for the whole life. That's that's another myth, a misunderstanding, something that they, you have to buy. That again, we teach you how to become self-insured. I hope that makes sense. And just remember your three nevers. Never buy any kind of cash value life insurance. Never ever, when they combine the two, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get messed over. One always affects the other. Never bundle the two. Kick the guy out of your house. If you have a universal life policy, they're going to say, well, that's the same thing. We put you in this and, and the funds and stuff like that. They do that. You know why they, be, they have universal life? Because... <laughs> Because they say it's just like this, and it's not. But it, they had to have a new product to combat what we were doing. That's why universal life exists. All right? And it's not the same. One, one, one payment, two things, not happening. Please get that in your brain. Uh, never buy life insurance as an investment. And never buy life insurance that pays dividends. All right? Now, next video come out, so what are you waiting for? Where I get this 9% that I use this all the time, even though that's hypothetical. We will show you ways to um, get those kind of returns, and I am looking forward to the last video of the series, and I know you are too. Hope you didn't skip through all of them. You're learning something. The thing here at the bottom says hutchhutchins.com. Please log on and make some comments. Let me know what you're thinking, and I'll be seeing you on the next video. Thank you.